Good morning, St. Mary's. Oh, that was quite loud, wasn't it? I shouldn't project. Um, it is great to see you, um, both you who are here um, physically and for those that are watching online. We gather together as the family of God today. So by being here today, you have chosen to set time apart for God. So don't you find that our world is just so full of distractions, both good and bad, but they can take us from what really matters to us. And actually setting aside a time for God every day and coming together on a Sunday is such an important thing and should be a priority in our lives. So the Bible says... Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. So you've come, you're here, and I want to encourage you to choose to um, position your minds and your hearts to receive from God and to give God the glory today and this morning. So as we start our service, let's take a moment to ask God to open our hearts to draw close to him, to confess any sin that might be a barrier between us and God, and then also to ask him to fill us with his Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Lord, open our hearts to you today. Help us put aside any distractions so that we can concentrate on you. Lord, we confess any sin that might be a barrier between us and you. Thank you that you forgive us through the blood of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come and fill us. Amen. Amen. So, um, after our worship, we are going to have a short time of open mic. So, um, perhaps you could be having a little think about whether there's a scripture um, or an encouragement or something you'd like to pray over us um, while we worship. So, children, we have two songs today. We have one song that I think you will know, you might not have sung it for a long time but and we know we're not allowed to sing but who says we're not allowed to dance okay so we if you want to stand up we are going to sing our um we're going to dance our praise to god this morning the actions are quite difficult so you just have permission to move okay any movement is good
well done, adults. <laughs> Wonderful. So it's good to get moving, isn't it? Our next song is called Creation Calls, and it's um, accompanied by a fantastic video. Children, I'd love you to watch out, and at the end, I want you to shout out for me your favorite animal that you see, okay? But this is a wonderful song that brings glory to God for the creation that he's made for us.
you want to take a seat. Children, were there any favourite animals you saw there? Jonathan, what did you see? All three. The ducklings, the panda and the penguin, brilliant. Um, who else can I see? Um, I'm forgetting people's names. Clara. The camels, fantastic. Chloe. The bait, oh, they were so sweet, weren't they? Phoebe, did you have one? No? What would yours be? Oh, no, ch ch not Charlie. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> the eagle, how majestic. Doesn't that all just point to the glory of God? Thomas, did you have one? Four. Go for it. Polar bear? Yeah. Yes. The little chicks. And the penguins. Fantastic. I love seeing the little bumblebee. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your creation. Your good gift to us in all its beauty and diversity and all its wonders. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lovely. So we're just going to have a short time of open mic. Has anybody got anything they'd like to share with us today? A scripture or a prayer you'd like to pray? I'll give it another moment. That's all right, Sally, you can come. <laughs> Haven't we been enjoying the beautiful blossom trees recently? And um, I was driving past and I saw a beautiful tree in someone's front garden, but it was, it was blocking the whole of their front of their house. And I thought, it wasn't a blossom tree, but it was a beautiful tree. And I thought, but there's blocking out all the light. They won't get any light in the house. And it's, I felt God speak to me and say, you can have something beautiful in your life, but it can block out all the light. You know, we can sometimes have something in our lives and say, God, this is beautiful. I love it in my life. But it can block out the light of Jesus all the same. It doesn't have to be something horrible. It can be something beautiful which we can have growing in our lives, which can still block out the light of Jesus. That's all. Thank you, Sally. Thank you. Would anybody else like to, to share? Yeah, shall I just pray into what Sally just shared then? And is Michelle around? Oh, Michelle, uh, we'll lead the kids out in a moment. Yeah, Heavenly Father, I pray that we would have eyes only for you. Lord, and all the um, distractions of the world, even the ones that are beautiful, Lord, we pray that they would not distract us from you. May we be lovers of God and not lovers of the world. Amen. Amen. Lovely. I'm now going to ask Michelle to come up because we have our Ignite groups this morning. Good morning, everyone. I'll just um, pray before we go out, if that's all right. Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day, Lord. Father, we thank you for our children. Lord, we pray your presence will be with us this morning and as we leave here today, Lord. Bless our time together and fill us with joy. Amen. So this morning we have our kindling group, which is zero to four years. So if they could head out the back and pass the cafe upstairs, Little Lambs, where our Ignite team would be. And at the end, 
return to a sort of cafe area and the team will be there to meet you. And our two other groups, Sparklers and Blaze, we're going to all be together today, so how fun is that? <laughs> I know, you're so excited. <laughs> so if you're in Sparklers, if you want to start making your way out to the Hope Centre, so if you're in reception year, year one or year four, uh, year two, head out, that's it, look at Mike. If you head out to Hope Centre, sanitise on your way in, that would be great. <laughs> Thank you. And then Blaze is our year threes, year fours, year fives, and year sixes. So thank you. Fantastic. It's great to be having kids groups back. So I'm now going to ask Sally to come and uh, lead us in our prayers. How awesome is the Lord Most High, the great King over all the earth. God reigns over the nations. God is seated on his holy throne. Father, we come to you today. We bring to you today, Lord of all the earth, King of the nations. We bring to you today our brothers and sisters across the world who are suffering because of the name of Jesus. If they persecuted me, said Jesus, they will persecute you also. Violence across, amongst Christians in sub-Saharan Africa has risen during the pandemic. Families are being held at gunpoint by masked jihadists and forced to flee their homes and their livelihoods. Lord, we pray that you would strengthen and sustain Christians who have been forced and dis to leave their homes and have been displaced because of Islamic insurgency right across sub-Saharan Africa. Lord, we pray that you would bring an end to this violence which has gone on for years and years and has killed so many people. May your love transform the hearts and lives of the persecutors. Lord, we pray for Christian organizations who are working on the ground to help these people. We pray they be protected and equipped as they labor to reach believers with vital aid, food, and medical care. Lord, thank you that all over the Middle East, you are revealing yourself to those who are seeking you through dreams, satellite TV, internet, and through the witness of your people. Lord, this is a dangerous place for secret believers from a Muslim background. Lord, may all those secret believers know they are not alone. Would you enable them to find fellowship and find discipleship in this lonely place and dangerous place? Christian refugees, Lord, we pray that they might find safety, community, and hope, Lord Jesus. And again, I pray for field workers so bravely working on the ground in these places to be equipped to serve secret and isolated believers. Lord, praise you that you are building your church in the Middle East. Thank you, Lord, for your secret church, which is growing day by day. Continue your secret work, we pray, Holy Spirit. Lord, we think of South America, countries like Colombia, Venezuela, where persecution arises from drug cartels or guerrillas. Lord, we pray for protection 
for courageous church leaders who actively share the gospel and speak out against corruption and violence. Lord, we pray you would grant them continued courage in the face of violent threats. Would you strengthen these brave leaders, their families and their congregations as they follow Jesus in this challenging environment? Lastly, Lord, we bring India to you, this situation. Lord, we cry out to you for your mercy and intervention in this desperate situation there at present. May the international community keep responding with more and more help that is needed. And may the government there distribute it wisely and fairly. Lord, thank you that faith is growing in India despite so much opposition faced by Christians in public and private life. Please keep bringing new believers to faith and give strength and resilience to Christians from a Hindu background. Frustrate the plans of Hindu extremists who want to rid the country of other faiths. And Lord, change the hearts of those in power. May your kingdom come and your will be done in India and across your world. We pray these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Sally. So important for us to remember our family around the world who are... Um, experiencing persecution and difficulties for their faith. As a church, we um, Open Doors is one of our mission partners, and um, they have lots of prayer resources about how to pray for people around the world. So if you're interested, um, you could speak to Sally or uh, look on the website. So we're going to go on to our notices now. Um, uh, you're probably aware that we are looking for somebody new to um, coordinate our cafe and actually um, coordinate this space as well. So we're looking for somebody that loves to um, share Jesus, love to see people come to know Jesus, um, could have a vision for this space as a community hub during the week to bring people in and to, um, to begin a journey. Um, the deadline for that is this Wednesday, so I hope um, take some time to pray about whether that might be um, appropriate for you. <clears throat> um, we have our APCM in person on the 19th of May. Um, there are opportunities to serve on the PCC and um, to be part of the, the leadership and the governance of, of this church. Um, also, if you want to go on the electoral roll, all the details are on the news sheet, so you can click on something that will take you to the website, which will um, tell you how to, how to be part of all of that. Uh, we have our Kingdom Come prayer meeting on Tuesday the 4th of May, 7.45 on Zoom. It's, oh, 8 o'clock. Um, eight o'clock on Zoom. All the details are in the um, new sheet and the, um, the link is on there. So do join us for that. We've been having a really good time of praying together. And then I want to tell you about um, Kingdom Come, which is something that Steve is um, uh, largely organising for us at the moment. So you've probably heard of Kingdom Come, We've Thy Kingdom Come. We've been um, part of it for a couple of years, but it's a global prayer movement that invites Christians from around the world to pray for more people to know Jesus. So uh, Christians from 172 different countries have taken part, 
all praying, come Holy Spirit, so that family, friends, neighbours, colleagues might come to faith in Jesus. So it's on the 13th to the 23rd of May, and it's hoped that everyone who takes part will deepen their own relationship with Jesus, but actually also pray for five friends or family to come to faith in Jesus, and prayer for the empowerment of the Spirit, that we would all be effective witnesses. So we would love to see everyone in St. Mary's taking part in this, and um, this is just really a time to pray, isn't it? You know, we can see so much that um, we want God to come. So a few action points for you. So it starts on the 13th of May, so this is a little bit of prep. So this week, be having a ponder about who your five people that you could be praying um, for could be. We are giving away some free prayer journals, um, which have a scripture, short reflection, and space to record your own thoughts. Um, They're at the back, and you can pick one up as you go out. There's also packs for the children um, to get involved as well, and Michelle will give those out um, to the kids through their groups. Um, There's also going to be a virtual prayer room, so you can sign up to... um, Pray at a particular time. Uh, You don't have to go anywhere for it. You just do it in your own home, but you can kind of log in to get resources and ideas about what to pray for. And then there's a space that you can can pray and add your thoughts to. So, um, yeah, that's going to be something that... um, all the churches in Loughton can get involved in. So we'd love to, we'd love to do it, um, be a strong part of that. So, um, yeah, wouldn't it be good to pray together as part of this? We long for more people to come to, come to know Jesus. So they are our notices. Everything, all the details are on the news sheet. So if you want to refer to the news sheet for more info, you can. Um, I'd like to invite Rachel to come up and do our reading for us, and then Malcolm is going to um, do our talk. Thanks, Rachel. Good morning, everyone. Okay, the Bible reading this morning is Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 13. I'll give you a minute to just get there if you need to. So it is, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, put on the full armour of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore put on the full armour of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Um, I am just going to say something before I go, um, because I feel like I'm going to regret it if I don't for the rest of my life. <laughs> um, I know, like, in open mic, I, I did want to come up, but I'm kind of, like, a bit shy when it comes to stuff like this. Um, I don't know, like, I just feel like if anyone's kind of, like, going through anything, I just really hope and pray that, like, whatever you're going through, you're able to kind of see the positives. Um, my granddad passed away um, last Friday, and... Um, I loved my granddad deeply, deeply, deeply loved my granddad. He was one of my bestest friends. Um, and I think since he's passed, I've been so unsettled, like sleeping just out the window, eating out the window. Um, and I've been angry and I've been upset and just kind of confused as to like, you know, what to do and stuff. But, um, and I'm like, angry in the sense that my granddad had dementia when he passed, and I was angry, like, you know, why did God allow him to kind of forget, like, my mum, myself, like, his family and stuff, we'd come to see him, and it was really quite difficult seeing him. Um, and I don't know what it was, like, I think it was just, like, it just kind of dropped to me um, throughout the week. And I was, I'd probably say it was God, I, I don't know, but whatever. Um, it kind of just dropped to me. And it was like, see, like, I think it was God probably speaking to me. And he was like, don't see the negative, see the positive. And the positive was that in my lifetime and in my granddad's lifetime, he was able to learn to love me two times. He, when he, he learned to love me as his granddaughter, and when he forgot me, and when he learned to love me again, 
just as someone that he was happy to be around and content and was obsessed with him because I was obsessed with him. So, um, yeah, I just felt like I couldn't leave here without saying that, that, you know, whatever, I know people have got loads of things going on, whatever you're going through, just, I really hope that, you know, someone who's new to this, I am able to see that. So I hope you guys who are more experienced are able to see that as well. But yeah, thank you. Yeah, come on. Thank you, Rachel, for sharing that. That's so good. And uh, someone needs to hear that today. Just you should take some time with the Lord this week. If you're going through, if you're struggling through something, you know, hear what Rachel's shared with us today and just give that to the Lord. Uh, so let's look here into Ephesians chapter 6. And today we're starting on a new three week series about. Spiritual Warfare, the Armor of God, Ephesians 6. We're going to be looking at this uh, next week. We're going to go into the actual armor itself uh, and so on, but I'm going to do an introduction for it today. And this is all part of us preparing the way for the Lord, uh, which is what we've been focusing on during this, at the time that we're coming out of the pandemic. We pray. We hope. We pray. And it's an opportunity for us to prepare the way for God to be at work in us and in our community. Um, and so this is about the reality of spiritual warfare that's around us, really. Uh, Tozer, A.W. Tozer once said, uh, a fearful world needs a courageous church. And I believe that God wants us to be courageous. It doesn't mean we're never going to be afraid, but it just means courage is when you are afraid, but you trust God anyway. <laughs> When you hold on to God anyway, it doesn't mean you're not afraid or not fearful, but that you know where to take that. And this is a call to courage, really. Uh, and this whole year has been a call to us for, for courage. It's been a bit of a stress test, if you like, on where we're at with God and our, the, the, the spiritual warfare and the spiritual armor that we need to put on is so important. Um, and it's so important to see Jesus with us in these times. I don't know how you have experienced the past year plus, but uh, you know, presumably, I think all of us in different ways have our moments where we struggle, don't we? And we want to see Jesus. We want to know that Jesus is with us in that place. Uh, I had a moment like that actually this week and I was sharing it with the family last night. Uh, felt quite, you know, just struggling with bits and pieces, discouragement and so on as we do. And as I dropped Joshua up at Staples Road for school, normally I just come straight back down and get on with the day. But I just thought, I'm going to go for a walk in the forest today and just, just give some of these things to God, just to kind of unburden my heart to the Lord. And I just was walking through the forest and just praying out loud, just kind of giving situations and giving myself to the Lord again. And there was just such an encouragement that came through that, actually, because as I walked, uh, hoping that nobody was kind of, you know how you get that feeling, you're kind of praying and you're wondering, you know, you're probably going to bump into someone and they'll think you're mad or something like that, talking to yourself. But uh, there was nobody around, and I just caught a glimpse, and I, I can only describe it as like seeing with your heart. It wasn't something I saw with my eyes, but kind of with your soul. I saw, as it were, a picture of Jesus. And he had his hand out to me and a smile, and he just invited me to come, come. And I find that so powerful for me in this week. Uh, and I, that's why I'm encouraging us all to, let, to come to Christ and to follow Jesus and to know that Jesus is close to us even when we may struggle. Jesus is with us. And the marvelous thing about that is I wouldn't, describe, I wouldn't say at that point that I felt really close to God or that I felt like I'm really, I'm doing well at the moment. I, I felt the opposite, actually. It's in times where we may not be feeling we're doing well, that God is near. Jesus is near to us. And I, I, I want that to be an encouragement to us because sometimes when we put on the spiritual armor, it's not always that we feel close to God. It's not always that we think we're doing really well. Sometimes we may feel we're struggling. 
we are sinking, we are not sure what's going to happen next. But actually, Jesus is with us. And when we are in those places, he wants us to be Christians in complete armor. Uh, there's, a, there's a lovely book I'd recommend to you by an old Puritan called William Gurnall who wrote a book called The Christian in Complete Armor. There's three volumes. I've been reading it this week, and it is brilliant. If you want to know more about the armor of God, he, he lived in the 17th century um, and went through completely different times, but he describes so much what's actually going on today, I feel. And if you want some more information on that, please do go there. And also, we're actually running a series on the armor of God in our Wednesday, our Wednesday midweek services. So if you ever want to, we're taking each piece of armor and a, whole, a talk on each piece of armor. So we've got Debbie sharing with us on all the armor of God next week. But if you want to go even deeper, you can also log on to those midweek services as well. So we are in a spiritual battle that is real. We are in a spiritual battle that is real. There are spiritual forces, as Ephesians 6 tells us, that are at work, that are opposing the people of God, and that are, um, uh, they're in opposition, and they are, uh, we have an enemy, the devil. The Bible says he's like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, resist him. And uh, right at the beginning today, you know, I do want to just say, because actually I don't think in the time I've been here, we've ever really got into the subject of spiritual warfare. Um, I really, I believe in that there is a devil. I believe that there, he exists, that there are demons, there are angels, there is a supernatural heavenly realms around us. I believe that. Just as we believe that Jesus rose from the dead, so we believe the devil is real and he's a defeated foe. Although he is powerful and cunning and wicked, he is defeated. And we don't want to be ignorant about our opponent, the devil. We don't want to be obsessed with him either, but we don't want to be ignorant of him. And so it's important to look into this biblically and see what does, what does Jesus have to say? What does God's word have to say? And it says to us, well, really what God's word says is we need training as disciples of Jesus in how to be in the spiritual battle. Uh, we need encouragement, uh, we need courage, we need equipment, and we need power. All of these things. And that's why we've got Ephesians 6 as the clearest, one of the clearest places in scripture that describes all of this to us. So here it says, I'm just going to go through these four verses one by one. So each verse is like, the point. Uh, so verse 10 says, finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. This is the confidence that the Bible calls us to. Be strong in the Lord. Take courage. Uh, it's like David when he said, you know, why are you down cast all my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. David spoke to himself uh, and, and encouraged himself in the Lord. Sometimes we need to do that. We need to actually grab ourselves by the scruff of the neck and, and remind ourselves of who God is in the midst of our trials and tribulations so that we can be strong, be strong in the Lord. This is where the source of the strength comes from. Be strong in in the Lord and in his mighty power. See where all the reliance is. It's not be strong in yourself or pull your socks up or try harder. It's not that message at all. Spiritual warfare is for people who do feel weak, but who remind themselves of the strength of God. Uh, what's that uh, scripture say? You know, um, or the song that we sometimes sing from Isaiah 40, strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. That's where the strength comes from. Our, you know, where my help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. That's where we need to go for strength. We trust, we lean on Christ. Uh, it's not about human ability here. It's not about trusting in our own resources. Finally, be strong in the Lord. And that's why we're always encouraging people to be in Scripture, to be reading our Bibles, to be praying. 
It's not just for some sort of religious duty that we do that. It's not just to tick a box or to say, you know, oh, I've read my Bible today. You know, I'm doing all right. You know, it's not about that. It is actually this training. that We need to be in the Word and in prayer in order to be strong. Um, that's how we get strong. And so many Christians uh, today sort of are, are sort of, you know, sinking in situations and puzzled as to why they feel they're sinking, but perhaps are not holding on to the Word of God or not trusting in the Lord or not reminding themselves to be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Many people get confused and, and wonder why they're struggling, but, but the answer might be that you know, you're not in the Scriptures or you're not in prayer or you're not in fellowship with God or with other people. And I would encourage you as, as the first base, before you get into deeper things of spiritual warfare, to actually just check out, are you in the Lord? Are you actually, you know, are you doing all you can do? Are you making use of all of the means of God's grace available to you so that you can be strengthened by them? And uh, I want to encourage us as God's people, whether we're listening online or we're here today, to, be, to make use of the things that God has already given you to be strong in him. And then it goes on in verse 11 and says, put on. It's going to tell us how to do this. How can you be strong in the Lord? Well, put on the full armor of God. It's like in Hebrews 13 verse 14, which also talks about clothe yourself in Christ. Uh, this is God's armor. It's being designed by God uh, and it is available to any disciple, any follower of Jesus who is, uh, you know, living and breathing. We need this armor, and it's the full armor of God. It is, there's a sufficiency about this. There is a power in this spiritual armor that God is giving us, and we need the whole lot. And uh, you, it's available to you. So put on this armor is to actively engage, because... You know, it says, so we're trusting in the Lord on the one hand, but on the other hand, we also have to do something as believers. If you don't want to get taken out in the spiritual battle, you have to engage. You have to do something. It says here, put on. We're trusting in the Lord. It's not that we do something, uh, you know, that's our, our strength, but God is giving us something. He's making available this armor to us. And just like, in a way, Jesus has made available forgiveness through the cross, and some people accept that by faith and, and receive that forgiveness. God has also given us equipment, weapons, armor, a, the, the, the power of God available to us. He's made it available, but we have to appropriate it by faith. We have to take hold of that for which God has given us, and we do that by faith and trust and believing, and that's how we can be strong in the Lord, we, we also have to reach out and say yes to God. There's something of this because there's something involving, there's something engaging and active, put on. In other words, you don't have to put on the armor of God uh, and you will be exposed. But it says here, put on. We have to engage the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. So, Friends, let's be clothed in God. Let's put this armor on when we're walking, when we're sleeping, when we're working, when you're watching TV, when you're eating with your family, when you are on holiday, put on the armor of God all the time. It's meant to be there for us, to stand against the devil. And the devil is real. He says, put on, your, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. So the Apostle Paul believes in the devil, and we see right from the beginning of Scripture, in Genesis chapter 2, that the devil is real. He's the one who went with the first lie and the first proud move uh, to get Adam and Eve to disobey God. And it was the devil in that Garden of Eden who, who tempted them. Uh, we see the, the devil in Luke chapter 10 uh, with, with, with Jesus. When Jesus went, sent the disciples out on mission, and then he, they came back from mission, having healed the sick and having done so many amazing things, Jesus said this, he says in Luke chapter 10, he says, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. 
In other words, the devil's kingdom, when you were out on mission, the devil's kingdom was being pulled back. Um, and that's what Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Uh, he says in John chapter 10, you know, the thief, who's the devil, this is Jesus, Jesus teaching, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's the mission of the devil. But Jesus says, I have come so that you may have life and have it to the full. Praise God. But we don't want to just forget. Sometimes we only quote that second bit, but we must remember we are up against uh, a defeated foe who is outraged and is desperate to pull us away from God. There's an enemy of your soul, an enemy of your children's souls as well, who wants to pull you and your kids away from God, who wants to pull all of us here away from God, and who wants the whole world to, to, to be in darkness. So, so Luke spoke about this. John spoke about this. Genesis spoke about this. The book of Revelation also speaks about this. Uh, in Revelation chapter 12, where, where we, we read about the, you know, the, the devil who is thrown down uh, and defeated. And the book of Revelation is an amazing book of Scripture because it reminds us that you know, the end of the story is that God wins and the devil is defeated and he is under, he is under our feet. It says they overcame him, talking about the devil, they, and talking about us, we as the church of God. They overcame him. How? By the blood of the Lamb. By, in other words, through what, by faith in Jesus, we overcome the devil. And by the word of our testimony. In other words, when we live for God, the devil can't, can't beat us. <laughs> you cannot be beaten. You, you, the devil is powerful, but Jesus is almighty. And so, you know, we've got an, an enemy, but they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. In other words, these, these Christians are really going for it. And as part of going for it in your Christian life, we're, we're conscious, we're not obsessed by the devil, we're not fearful of the devil, we're not intimidated by the devil, but we're just aware of his schemes, is what Paul is saying here. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Don't be taken out by this deceiver, this liar. Don't be fooled. The biggest lie the devil wants you to believe is that he's not even there. That he, you don't need to think about him ever. That you can just carry on and, uh, and do your best. You know, but the devil is real. We, we need to oppose him and resist him and be aware of those schemes and put on the full armor of God. Verse 12 it says, for our struggle, and there you go. That's the expectation of the Christian life. The Bible never says it's going to be a bed of roses. It all, you know, the Christian life, we are to expect struggle with Jesus. But praise God that there is one who has gone in victorious procession ahead of us, Jesus. So he has held, he's taken death and hell and the devil captive. He's defeated them publicly on the cross. Um, but uh, even though that's happened, we're still waiting. We're still in the time where the end is not yet. The devil is not yet uh, thrown into the lake of fire as he will be one day on the day of the Lord. That's the day of judgment. The devil will be thrown into the lake of fire, finally. And there'll be no, he'll be gone to be judged forevermore. But that day is not yet. It's coming. But until that day, we are in a time of struggle still. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's not about fighting people or one another. It's about recognizing that the real enemy is, is behind. It, it kind of, it's an invisible war, if you like. The devil is the real enemy, not other people. It says... Not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And there's a lot in here, and there's a lot in here that I'll be honest with you, I don't understand it all, okay? There's so much in here that many scholars and biblical academics have looked at this, and different Christians see different things in here as well. That's fine. 
There are different ways you can interpret this. I think the big picture is that in the heavenly realms, there is a supernatural heavenly realm with the angels, the demonic forces at work, with God, with the devil, at, in, 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 you know, influencing events and people and situations. It's real. It's not just, it's not just sort of all happening by accident or chance. There are spiritual forces at work in the heavenly realms. And you, you, you see that all the way through Scripture. You just read the book of Job, for example, and you will see the, the heavenly realms impact on the world in which we live. And it's, in my mind, the only reason we can really give for how much wickedness and evil and corruption there is in the world today. It, it, it has an author, the father of lies, Jesus calls the devil, who is, uh, who is seeking to steal, kill, and destroy. And so we must wrestle in the battle, for our struggle is not against people. It's against the devil. It's against the forces of wickedness and uh, these powers. The devil is wicked. He is cunning. He is powerful. But he's defeated. Praise God. And we've always got to remember that. He's defeated. Colossians chapter 2 speaks about how the devil has been defeated through the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. And also, if you go back to that passage in Luke chapter 10, it will remind us that actually Jesus has given us authority over the works of the devil. So we, as God's people, are not under his authority. You, we're under the captain, our Lord Jesus Christ. We're not sitting under the devil's authority. Okay, so... <laughs> Um, Martin, there's, a, there's an old story I've just remembered with Martin Luther. I don't know if it's true or not, but uh, he uh, one day, you know, he was he he was got woken up out of his sleep, and he woke up and uh, he saw the devil in his room, and he went, "Oh, it's only you," and went back to sleep. <laughs> and I love that because that the devil would love us to feel intimidated, fearful about him, but actually, for if you are in Christ. You do not need to be afraid at all. You just need to be aware and, and battling and ready. Uh, so, you know, we're not impressed by the devil. Uh, we love Jesus. And, Je and one of the best ways to not be afraid of the devil is to, is to have a right view of Jesus. To, to see Jesus uh, in his risen glorified, ascended majesty in his perfect power, in his absolutely glorious wonder. One of the things I love to do, you know, is to read through Revelation chapter 1 because there in the Bible gives us the most wonderful description of the risen and glorified Jesus. You know, the head and his hair was white like wool. His eyes were like blazing fire. His feet like burnished bronze. You know, the, the, the sound of his voice was like rushing waters. He, you know, he said, I, am, uh, I was dead and I'm alive again and behold, I'm alive forevermore and I hold the keys of death and of hell. And I always, that always so lifts my heart when I look to Jesus. There's no contest, friends, between the devil and the Lord Jesus. No contest. Jesus is Lord Jesus is victor. Jesus has overcome. And we, that's a reason for us to celebrate. If we are angry about injustice, if we are you know, cross about the way that the world is, is, is there's such wickedness and corruption and brokenness in our world today, then we need to celebrate that Jesus is the overcomer. He has overcome the world. Uh, you know, that's, that's something for us to really get hold of and rejoice in the goodness of God about. So the devil's defeated. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world. And then lastly, here's the last thing. I'm just going to be a few minutes here. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when... It's going to happen. There's going to be a time of struggle in your life. Once again, our struggle and when the day of evil comes, none of us are going to be exempt from trouble, suffering, 
trial. But I love it that it also says when the day of evil. In other words, it's not going to last forever. It's a day comes and goes. The struggle you're in now will not be forever. That's encouraging. It will end, either in this world or the next. But it will end, praise God. For when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And this is when, friends, we've got to be, take courage as God's people. We're not called to retreat. We are called to stand. The whole armies of hell may be against us, but friends, we are the church of the living God, and we're called to stand our ground, not to yield, not to sleep, not to take a step back, not to yield to temptation or to sin, but to stand. And that looks like a, a godly life. That looks like right decisions. It looks like integrity, honesty, love, compassion. That's what it means to stand your ground in a, in a, in a crooked and perverse generation. To love, to, to, to have compassion, to live like Jesus. That's what it means to stand. Stand your ground. And I'm going to close with this, but it says, after you, listen to this, after you have done everything to stand. Now that's quite interesting because the verse, the chapter begins by saying, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And then we just get this sentence, after you've done everything. And I just, there's, this, there's a balance here that's going on. We've got to do something. You've got to put on, you've got to, by faith, receive the armor of God in your life, which we're going to hear more about next week, what that armor is. But we trust in the Lord, but the Lord also expects us to take responsibility in our Christian lives. You can't say that, uh, you know, after you have done everything, if we're neglecting prayer, then you haven't done everything. <laughs> If we're neglecting God's word, if we're neglecting loving people, if we just live our own life in our own sweet way and, and don't follow Jesus, then we haven't done everything. So I want to encourage you today. Have you done everything to stand? Do Make sure that you are keeping yourself hot as a Christian and not cold. This is a time when many Christians, the love of many Christians will grow cold and the Bible prophesied about it. The love of many will grow cold. But friends, don't let your love go cold. You've got to do everything you can so that you're going to stand. We're going to stand, yeah? Even if all others desert, we will not. We will stay on the front line. We will stay to stand against the devil's schemes. And I think it's a, a wonderful thing. And we need to do this every day. Just like you've got the daily bread, you take up your daily cross, you know, give us today our daily bread. Take up your cross daily and follow me, Jesus says. So the armor of God. Every day. It's a daily thing. It's a daily moment where we take up our cross and we put on our armor and we, we, we follow the Lord. So today, friends, stand. Don't be unarmed. A couple of things, practical tips here. Is to, how do you stand? You focus on Jesus, as we said before. Like I found a really helpful Revelation chapter 1. We focus on Jesus. You keep right with God and others. Forgiveness. Keep right. Keep short accounts with God. If you know you've sinned, ask him to forgive you. and Get that fresh cleansing again. And Don't go on and on and on through life without asking God to clean your heart. You've got to do everything to stand. Keep right with God. Keep right with people. Uh, we want to keep serving in love. The best way to resist the devil is love. The devil hates love. We love love. You, the, one of the best spiritual weapons is the weapon of love. So keep serving in love. That will be part of doing everything. Trust God in trials. Know your Bible. Persevere in prayer. These are all ways that we can stand having done everything. And so I'd love us to just, we need to finish really, but I'd love us to uh, take a moment now to just say, Lord, I'm coming to you. Lord, I, I'm, I'm aware of my need and I want, to, I want today to put the spiritual armor on. I wonder if we may stand.
I'm just going to lead us in just a moment of, of prayer because we need to respond by faith. The kingdom of God calls us to respond by faith. Uh, and maybe you just want to put your hands, you don't have to, but you might want to put your hands out in front just as a sign of saying, God, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I come. And so in the name of Jesus, receive the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power in the name of Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Just welcome the Holy Spirit right now into your soul and say, Holy Spirit, I surrender to you. And today I ask for the armor of God in my life. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord, I want to take a stand against the devil. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters in the struggle that is against spiritual forces of wickedness. Lord, we trust in the cross. We trust in the blood of Jesus that was shed for us. We trust in your victory, and we pray for the victory now in Christ Jesus in every situation in our struggles. And so today, just you talk to the Lord and say, yes, Lord, give me your armor, I pray. So that when tough times come, I'm going to stand and not give up. In the name of Jesus, stand your ground, people of God. Stand your ground. Thank you, Father. And I pray that you would give us grace this week and the power of the Holy Spirit to get ourselves in order and to do everything to stand. Father, increase in us a love for your word of prayer and worship, a love for fellowship. I pray that you will warm our hearts, Lord. May our hearts be on fire for God in our generation. I pray that we would give, Father, because you deserve the best service that we can give in this generation. And I pray, Father, that we would not be half-hearted, but that we would be standing and alert and ready for action as the army of the Lord. Soldiers of Christ, arise and put your armor on. Give us grace for this fight, Father, with the evil one. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, the blessing of God will rest on us all. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And I pray, Lord, finally, I pray that as we go from this place, that the biggest thing in our minds might be our glorious, risen, and ascended Savior, who is victorious over all. May your name, O oh God, be glorified. May Jesus Christ fill our lives so much that we become a terror to the devil. And that, Father, that we will see your kingdom come and Satan fall and your kingdom come. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people said? Amen. Sorry, I didn't catch that. All God's people said? Amen. Amen. <laughs>
and seeing, believe. Amen. Amen. As we go, for the people at the back want to go first, and that will help us maintain social distancing. Have a fantastic week, everyone, and remember to stand.